Well, how's it going, everyone? I certainly have had a very interesting day. Um, thought I'd make this uh, short video on how interest rates are affecting the M&A activity in the southwest region of the United States. And not only that, but this affects the entire country. Right? Interest rates are rising because the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates because of the economy and inflation. In return, what ends up happening is, uh, you know, transaction activity with mergers and acquisitions, um, it has an effect on, uh, you know, business itself. And I was with uh, investment bankers this morning. I was with private equity partners. And um, I met some fantastic people today. I really did here in Arizona. Um, I met uh, Mr. Paul Wolf. He's a fellow Kansas City boy, so I got to give a shout out to him. I appreciate uh, meeting him. He, uh, he is the he is the uh, he's the managing director and development guy over there at uh, Charger Investment Partners, which is really cool. Uh, he was on the panel today. We had an investment banker and a partner of uh, Mr. James Collier. Very good guy. I like him too. He uh, I got to meet him. It's really fascinating what he's doing with his uh, team over there at uh, his firm, and you know. I got some things I need, a list of things I need to run down here because some people out there don't understand how the interest rates do affect M&A activity. And so what is happening out there in the market? I mean, we sat there with the panel today and we listened uh, today at the breakfast, uh, the different things that were happening in the market because of the rising interest rates. And these are just a few things that are happening out here in the market in the Southwest area. So what's really going on here? Uh, what's really going on here is this. What do you see when interest rates rise? Okay, uh, you see less quality businesses that will not be bought or funded. That's a fact. When the interest rates rise, um, the market shrinks and you know, it depends on what kind of PE firm you have, private equity firm you have. Uh, I will say this, more than likely if you're a value-add private equity firm, you're having a heyday right now. You're having a ball, which means you're getting plenty of deal flow. And the investment bankers I was talking to today say, you know, the, the PE firms who have over leveraged, okay, they will basically be in trouble here very shortly because you know paying 13 uh, a multiple 13 on a, a business you know it's just not doable and if the rates the interest rates we got right now um, a lot of people try to avoid paying high multiples but some don't you know but we're going to see some very uh, interesting uh, activities happen when the interest rates keep rising um, we're going to see PE firms who used a lot of leverage be in trouble that's a fact. Uh, valuations are going to be affected across the board. We're going to see, you know, inflation is not transitory at this point. However, uh, I will say this. Uh, the multiples when you go buy a business, they will likely start to come down as, you know, the interest rates keep rising and keep pushing the economy to its limits. Uh, we are seeing problems in the economy now. We're seeing uh, a contraction, I guess you call it. Um, here's, uh, you know, another thing. Banks are not lending like they were before. We already knew that, but when you go to a bank and you need to get debt for your deal or your transaction, and you're an accountant, an attorney, you're on a, you're on a team uh, with investment bankers, they're, they're, just, they're just not open right now. So you've got to find other sources of commercial uh, lending. And there was plenty of those people uh, who do that too for commercial, uh, outside commercial banks, like loan originators. And uh, I, I can tell you, they're probably going to be really busy in the commercial space right now for private equity because they can give lower rates than, you know, banks can uh, because that's a that's, uh, PE industry as well, the PE space. Um, you know, we're going to see more transactions paused or canceled. That's a fact. Uh, opportunities, uh, you're going to see more opportunities for strategic partners for businesses who have over leveraged, you know, maybe because they needed uh, 
their operations needed funding they got you know leverage and you know the, the revenue is falling when interest rates rise the revenues fall so something to really consider and think about uh, higher rates will expose the firms who use too much for leverage um, some some operators may walk away some business operators may walk away because it just doesn't make sense to continue we're going to see a lot of that happening we really are um, restructuring may not work uh, on some businesses after the rates are rising we're probably going to see a lot of that as well um, more companies will rely on cash flow and earnouts than using debt when we're doing a transaction we want to see healthy returns and healthy revenue and healthy EBITDA you know I, I like to say earnings because you know I'm trained like the bill I'm trained like the Warren Buffett way of value investing, but uh, you know when you're really evaluating and analyzing a business, you want to look at their earnings and their EBITDA and a whole bunch of things in the financials, and you want healthy cash flow and income, okay? And s sometimes when you're in the growth mode, you don't have that, so you use leverage. So we're going to see some businesses start to go out of business, and. You know, restructuring just may not work for them, so they're going to be bankrupt, and that's that, you know. Um, we're going to see more private equity firms that have losses, okay. We're already starting to see that. We're seeing Blackstone, who uh, renegotiated lots of their debt. They're very scared. The market's very volatile right now. The duration in the bond market is just incredible. So people are nervous. Me, not so much. You know, us valuers, we ride things out. And that's what we're trained to do. You know, um, on the buy side, listen to this, on the buy side, the buy side teams will be more cautious when doing due diligence on a business they're considering for a transaction. Yes, they, they will be. It's just a fact. I mean, when you go out there and you look at a business, you want to make sure that there's no aggressive uh, accounting going on on financials. It's something to think about. Uh, we're going to see the interest rates affect a lot of the financials in these businesses and some people may get a little, they may start using aggressive accounting practices to cover up the fact that, you know, they're naked when the tide goes out. Just something to think about, you know. We're going to see some of that. Um, we're also going to see lower multiple in the transaction. We're going to see lower multiples for transactions. Um, we're going to see more opportunities for value add private equity firms. People come in and are saying, hey, this business is in trouble. We'll partner with you or take it off your hands. And there are going to be some really nice transactions. I mean, this is ideal time to do M&A, if you really ask me. Because if you've been, I'm a trained value investor. Uh, someone likes a guy Spear, Warren Buffett, Munger, Mondish Pabrai. I mean, Bill Ackman. Bill Ackman introduced me to into value SE. So all this stuff here, it's ideal time to really look in the market because there's opportunities out there. If you know how to value add, yes, it's an opportune time. Um, I'm smiling about that because I'm, I'm I just got a, a, a an opportunity to hit me hit my desk last week, and it's from a guy <laughs> that follows me on Twitter. It's pretty cool. He's got a little uh, fintech company. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, we're going to see more creative financing structures and transactions. Guaranteed. It's already happening. Uh, we're going to see more earnouts. We're going to see, uh, you know, more LBOs. Uh, LBOs right now. When you do an LBO, you're going to see some more creative financing. I'll just say that. More, more structuring, creative structuring. I'll say that. Um, the high cost of debt doesn't really make sense when you got returns coming in you want to really you know if, if your revenues here and your debts here okay maybe you can work something out but when your debts here and your revenues here you're in trouble <laughs> uh, so these uh, there's several things we do to engage in m a activity and there's a variety of reasons we do m a and one is diversification for our fund for portfolios say like uh you know i raised a hundred million dollar fund 
and I'm going out there and I'm buying businesses from my private equity portfolio and one of them fails as long as I got seven or eight of them that do real well this one doesn't matter but um, diversification makes it easier to have a loss okay because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket um, some funds are like this most aren't uh, synergies roll-up strategies growth growth in the space maybe you want to create market share it's another ways reason we engage in M&A activity and you know maybe you're having a bankruptcy you want to avoid bankruptcy you want to sell your business or get a strategic partner to avoid the bankruptcy it's another reason we do M&A activity um, and sometimes it's just because of the self-interest of the better they're like I like the business I gotta own it and you know what it happens I know someone's doing that right now anyways Hey, that's all I got. I hope you got something out of this. I mean, I really did have a really good time. Interesting to watch the panel, learn, listen, and really uh, uh, digest uh, what's happening and the state of the M&A market down here in the Southwest. It's fascinating stuff. And all the investment bankers, uh, thank you, Kathy Hugh, JP Morgan. I talked to her this morning. She's awesome. She's a private banker. Uh, Mr. Kansas City guy, uh, Mr. Paul Wolf, pretty awesome, James Collier, and several other people I met. Fantastic meeting you. This is all I got today, and I uh, hope you got something out of this. Thanks a lot. We'll see you there. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you want to learn more or see more, go to my website, jamesonsharp.com. You'll see more there. Hey, thank you so much. That's all I got. Until next time, catch you later.